Hi guys, welcome to this webinar. I'm just giving a few. I'm just giving, I'm, uh, I'm just giving a minute or two for everybody to lock on successfully. So let's just uh, let's just wait here for everybody to lock on to this webinar. And while we wait, I'm gonna go through the slide so long just to get us started. You can tell me more about yourself by first of all letting us know where are you tuning in from in South Africa. Where are you tuning in from? Right, I'm here in Cape Town, lovely Cape Town. The weather is beautiful, lovely day outside. Uh, you can just let us know where you're tuning in from. And then secondly, you can let us know in what industry is your business trading in what industry is your business trading right we've got people here from pongola we've got people from mitrand cape town langaban germiston in gauteng mitrand somebody from howick i was there last year october what a fun trip Really enjoyed it. We've got Sarl from the East Rand. Welcome, Sarl. Laratu from Mitrand. Ansari from Kempton Park. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. In what business industry are you trading? Right. We've got somebody in accounting. Building maintenance. Good. 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 Give us your industry, industrial compressors and generators. Great stuff. Thanks, Arl. Art and culture, interesting industry that. Education. So a, a vast variety of industries we have here. And now I want you guys to give me a bit of insight to your challenges when it comes to the lockdown for your business and uh, what exactly are you struggling with and i think the majority is going to be cash flow if there's something else that you're struggling with you can let us know if it is cash flow you can let us know right okay so some industries coming through hydrology hydrology food and beverages sean i'm not sure that digital marketing is is that the industry that you're trading in or is that your biggest challenge if you can just differentiate that for me please right we've got quivers with home improvement building maintenance and women in business interesting welcome allison great stuff right guys your biggest challenges in business with the coronavirus and the lockdown what are you struggling with what are you struggling with give me some insight to your problems cash flow yes i predicted a lot of people are struggling with cash flow in this time as the economy uh, as the economy was basically brought to a, a a standstill all right, Sean, I see that's your, industry, uh, that's your industry. Great stuff. Thanks for informing me. Digital marketing, something that's obviously now booming with people going online. Right, we've got Katlejo, professional services, business training, coaching, and consulting. Good. We probably will have a nice conversation, Katlejo. We understand each other. Right, Allison, skills of entrepreneurs to understand the changes and le legalities and requirements. Cool. I reckon that's more on a compliance law uh, platform, Allison. Cash flow, yes, Nubuchle cash flow. Retsepile, no business at all. Okay, good. So I get some insight to, to what you guys are struggling with. And at the end of this webinar, the aim is basically that you should be able to adapt your competitive advantage and differentiate yourself from the competitors. And this is such a key aspect to putting yourself ahead in the market is really to find that competitive advantage and drive yourself above the competitors. And one thing that I've realized with my experience 
over the last couple of years in writing business plans and consulting clients, uh, the one thing that I saw is when it came to competitive advantage, everybody normally said, I've got a better price than a competitor's and I've got better service. Now, the challenge I have with that thinking when it comes to competitive advantage is if I put you next to four other people that does exactly the same service that you are doing, why should I select your business and not their business? Because all five of you are telling me you've got a better price at a better service. So who am I to believe? Um, that, that for me just doesn't make sense. So you've got to find something that puts yourself ahead of the competitors. Right, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Real practical advice, guys. Real practical advice. It's stuff that you can take, implement in your business, and you should see a change. Uh, if you if you attend this webinar fully right good good just quickly before i continue i want you guys to know that there is a 30 second delay between a 20 to 30 second delay between when i'm speaking and you actually hearing my voice also there's a 20 to 30 second delay when it comes to the ad or the the slide rotation as well so just keep that in mind there might be some moments of silence after i ask a question that's just me waiting for you guys to, to get that answer or that question and answer me. So there might be a 20 second delay every time I answer, I ask a question. Uh, also note that when the webinar drops, all you need to do is you need to refresh the link. You can either go out totally and uh, log in back with the same link that you used, or you can just reconnect on the top right, uh, there should be somewhere a button that, that will help you to reconnect to the webinar if the sound is lost. Right. Also note that the other day I did a webinar and uh, my internet dropped here from home. That meant I had to re re uh, reconnect and come in again. So if that happens, I apologize. Uh, lastly, when it comes to issues, Note that this is a webinar, so sometimes there is a bit of sound issues, clarity sometimes become a, becomes a problem, so just bear with us. If you do struggle to keep up, it is recorded, so you will get an email with a replay link afterwards, and then you can watch this webinar again. You can answer your uh, comments in the comments section, very important. And lastly, if you guys feel inspired, and if you feel like you are learning something, please tell me in the comments. Please encourage me. It's always good to see that. It's always nice to, to get a bit of encouragement. It will also show me that I'm doing a good job, uh, which, which I'm obviously very passionate about. So just positive comments in the comment box. Right, guys, my name is Brent Bardenhorst. I'm a CETA accredited business facilitator. Uh, and I'm also a keynote speaker on various topics throughout South Africa. Uh, recently, I've done a very cool uh, presentation in Howick that was in KwaZulu-Natal last year on rebooting the economy in Howick. And we are ready to move forward with some very cool projects in Howick uh, when it comes to uh, really incubating entrepreneurs in KwaZulu-Natal and as soon as this lockdown finishes, I'll be on a plane on my way to Howick to help the guys they reboot their business, to educate aspiring entrepreneurs, and to basically incubate them for six months and get them off the ground. Great. So I'm very excited about that. In my early stages as an entrepreneur, I was at Company Partners. I was... Uh, business consultant at company partners and that was where i was doing most of my training when it comes to, uh, when it comes to business consultation writing business plans and so forth after i finished in com uh, at company partners i launched business plan pro in december 2016 it's a business plan brand where we've written hundreds and hundreds of business plans all over south africa and the brand recently has rebranded to Business Plan Pro. And I'm also now in a phase where I'm looking to expand the business into Eastern Africa, uh, Kenya, um, uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, those countries, as well as Nigeria. So we're looking to expand our Business Plan Pro brand. That's very exciting. 
And I've also launched Entrepreneurship School in January 2018. I've been consulting startups, businesses, and writing business plans for a long time now, over eight years. And I've been a keynote speaker to a various uh, um, organizations. I've done some uh, business coaching for the water and sanitation department in Klein William last year. That was also very interesting. I came there and it was probably one of the coldest days of my life in this cold hall. So I was shaking as I did my presentation, but I finished it, luckily. Great, 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 great. All right, so that's just a bit of an introduction from my side. You guys can follow me on Instagram. My name is Brent Bardenos on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook at Entrepreneurship School SA. You can follow me on LinkedIn as well as YouTube. And I'm saying this because I'm posting regular content and videos where I give tips away, where I give advice, uh, snippets, five-minute videos on very interesting topics that you need to be aware of in your business. If you struggle with certain stuff, it will definitely be um, beneficial for you if you follow me on these channels. Great. All right. And just uh, from our side as Entrepreneurship School, that is the team. We've got Nakane on the right-hand side. She is she has been with me for over a year now. We've got Sisonke. He's fairly new. He's our salesman. Brilliant guy. And then we've got Tammy, who is our young new recruit. And I'm quite excited to see what she will bring to the table. We've got a mission to activate dreams in people and create a platform for them to launch in the direction of their dreams. And our vision is to educate, mentor, and lead entrepreneurs to start, build, and grow their organizations. And we've got a few channels through which we, we push this mission and vision, and we make sure that we are effective wherever we go. We've also have various registered agents at Entrepreneurship School. One of them is live on this webinar, Gonse. Welcome, Gonse. Uh, and she is residing in Gauteng, and she's also operating on behalf of Entrepreneurship School in Gauteng as well. Great, great. Right, I just want to check. Can you guys hear me, Lawrence? You maybe should just reconnect your, uh, your webinar. And then we should be good to go. We're a CETA accredited organization. Our registration number is 13719. And we've been running entrepreneurship and business courses for a long time. Guys, I'm just stating our credibility to let you know that the info that I'm giving you is proper, it's good, and it's not just a flash in a pan, fly by night webinar. This, this is topics that I've been dealing with and thinking about for over five years now. All right. Just a quick testimonial from one of our recent clients, Michaela Webster. She's the founder of uh, UXperio. She basically had a dream to go into business, but she had no idea how or what to do, and she didn't really understand business also. So we went with Michaela for the online or, or for the personal business program where I sat with her once a week for a period of 12 weeks, where I took her from point number A to point number Z, teaching her as much as I possibly can in those 12 weeks about business. We take a very tactical approach where we focus firstly on the foundation for the first four weeks. Uh, in the fifth week, we look at the brand from the sixth to the 10th week. We help with systems, getting proper marketing, sales and operational systems in place. Then we finish off with financial advice and also business culture. And I'm happy to report that Michaela, after the business program, 12 weeks, she had an online presence, she had an active business, she had clients that she could service, and we successfully helped her to launch her business. And this is very exciting for me as, as, as the business owner of Entrepreneurship School. This is really what I'm passionate about. Somebody coming in with no information, going through our programs, and at the other side, they launch a business that is freaking incredible and this makes me really happy right okay so guys i'm ready to start please throw your comments in the in the comment section tell me what you think and give some encouragement as well if you are learning something right so here we go 
A successful person is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks life throws at him. Right, so Brian Tracy said the true test of leadership is how well you function in a crisis. It's obvious that we're dealing with a crisis now. It's obvious the economy is standing still. It's obvious that there is a virus. Uh, and I be, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that this could be a test of your leadership, not for the worse, but for the better. You got to ask yourself, am I the type of leader that I would look up to if I was one of my followers? Right, you got to ask that question. You got to be honest with yourself. And if the answer is not to your liking, you should tr try to switch that answer around. You should try to focus on what can I do in these tough times versus what's impossible and what I can't do. A change of perspective, I believe, is necessary. And as I already said, it's obvious we're going through some challenges. It's obvious that, that there's trials and tribulations. But it's your responsibility as a leader, instead of to throw in the towel and say, it's hopeless, I can't get anything done, rather ask yourself, what's the opportunity here? Because real leaders emerge from very tough uh, circumstances. Right, you've got to be tough. You've got to be uh, relentless. You've got to ask yourself, what opportunities is lying here that nobody is seeing? If you look at your industry at this current stage, what is going on in the industry? How has this uh, economical shutdown and this lockdown influenced your industry? Right. Now you've got to ask yourself, this is what's currently happening in the industry. Where is the industry going? That's your second question. Where is the industry going? Because you want to prepare yourself and put yourself in that position before the industry gets there. Steve Jobs said, always skate towards where the puck will be, not where the puck is now. That's an ice hockey reference, right? So he, he listened to one of the greatest ice hockey players in American history, and that guy said that his secret was he never, skate, he, uh, he never skated towards the puck. He always thought to himself, where is this guy going to hit the puck? I'm going to skate towards that point. And then he was already there when the puck got there, and that gave him the title as one of the best ice hockey players. So you've got to do the same with your business. You've got to look at the industry. You've got to ask yourself, where is the industry going now after lockdown, in the midst of this crisis, after the, this crisis? Where is the industry going? And how can I adapt my business model and my competitive advantage now that I can change direction to go to where the industry will be so that I'm not shocked when things change? Guys, I hope that gives you some food for thought. Change your perspective from negative to positive. Change your perspective from doom and gloom to opportunity. What can I do? Uh, and one of, the, one of the definitions of success is you got to do the best that you can with what you have at the place that you're at. And I also want to add to that, all you can do is all you can do and all you can do is enough. But I want to say, make sure you are doing all that you can do. Many times people throw their hands in the air and they're like, well, I've done everything. But if you're really honest with yourself, you didn't really do anything or everything you could do. So you got to change your perspective, your attitude, and you got to be a doer. Do everything that you can do regarding this. Right. Am I speaking to someone here? You just hit me up. You've been quiet in the comments. I just want to check everybody is live and, and active and happy. Okay, cool. So let's get started on creating a competitive advantage. I'm going to go through three major aspects in this presentation. The first one is how do you create a unique advantage? How do you compete with the competitors? And how can you make your service accessibility better? Right, you've got to make that thing really easy for people to, to attain. So firstly, I want to tell you guys that people buy emotionally. Very, very important. People buy emotionally and people justify that purchase logically. All right. People buy emotionally and they justify logically. So let's think about the emotional concept when you sell something. And I'm going to give you guys some food for thought here, some ideas that you can think about as we go through this this particular section, then I'm also going to give you guys examples to 
how you can get there. And then lastly, I'm going to finish off this section with practical examples. Cool. So first of all, in order to attach an emotional concept to your service or product offering, you have to build business on your strength. That's key number one. This is one thing that my mentor told me, and he changed my life forever. He constantly at one stage told me that you got to build business on your strength. So you got to ask yourself personally in the mirror, ask yourself, what is my strength? And then that should become the whole foundation of your competitive advantage. Cool. The second idea is to physically attach an emotional selling concept to your product or your service. All right. You've got to attach something emotionally to your product or your service. And this emotion, you can actually display clearly in your tagline for your logo when it comes to your branding, right? That emotional concept. And then the third thing that can make is if you are different. you got to be different, right? Remember I, in the beginning I said when it comes to a competitive advantage over the last six years or so, I think 95% of people that I dealt with, and it was a lot of people, told me that they've got a better price with a better service. And then I get to the next guy, same industry, let's say security services. I write a business plan for this guy on his security company. The next guy, I've got another security business plan. And both of them said at competitive advantage, they've got a better price at a better service. Doesn't make sense. If I put you together, why should I pick one or the other? Cool. So you got to be different. you got to find a way to differentiate yourself from the competitors. Very, very important. Now, first of all, in the previous slide, the first idea is build business on your strength. Right. So you got to build business on your strength. And I've got a model here. I call it the sweet spot model. And this is a very cool model because I can adjust it in a bunch of ways to get to a, a result that I want. But for this specific webinar, I've come to the, the model to get to your strength. What makes you a good entrepreneur or a good business person? Right. What makes you a good entrepreneur or a good a business person? And there's three things you need to answer to become a good entrepreneur or a good business person person or a good business in general. The first thing is your skill or your talent. What unique skill or talent do you possess that you can do better than other people? What unique skill or talent do you possess that you can do better than other people? That's the first question. What are you good at? Right. Secondly, what are you deeply passionate about? What are you deeply passionate about? And to get that answer, I would ask the question to say, what would you do with your life if you've got 10 million rand in the bank, you never have to work another day in your life, what would you do for the rest of your days with your free time? That's normally something that can indicate you towards your passion. Now, you've got to be careful with passion because sometimes passion, sometimes you... Uh, passionate about a hobby, something that will never be able to make money for you. And uh, sometimes you are just genuinely passionate about something that actually can make money for you. So you've got to draw a line here between what's a hobby and what's a real solid business idea where I can make a difference. Right. And then lastly, economic engine, what drives your economic engine? What makes you money? In other words, what makes you valuable? What makes you valuable as an, as an individual, an entrepreneur, or a business? What makes you valuable? If you can answer these three questions and your answers align with each other and it forms that spot in the middle, that sweet spot where all three circles align and all three answers are basically in tune with each other. If you can find that sweet spot, I would say that is your strength. And if you can build business on this strength alone, 
That's excluding putting an emotional value to your product or your service, excluding being different in the market. If you can just do this, you will already have a unique advantage. Right? Are you guys with me? I hope you guys are learning something here. This is huge when it comes to a unique advantage in the market. If you're really talented at what you do and you're really passionate about what you are doing, then it's obvious the economic engine works and it's obvious that you're already different in the industry, right? Because you're talented and you're, and you're passionate about this thing. People feel passion. People are inspired with passion and that changes the, the, the uh, actions and that makes you an influential leader. Right, cool. Good, good, good. Some good comments coming through. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. So let's look at emotional concept. And I've taken one that's very obvious. All right. I've taken one that's very obvious. Maybe some of you are guilty of this. Maybe not. I'm not because at this stage I've been building business and there wasn't a lot of uh, free cash, right, for therapy shopping. But this is a prime example of an emotional concept and therapy shopping is a real thing like i've googled this and this is the the, the definition that i got off uh, from google retail therapy is shopping with a primary purpose of improving the buyer's mood or disposition often seen in people during periods of depression or stress it is normally a short lift habit items purchased during this period of retail therapy are sometimes referred to as comfort buys Guys, be honest with me. Who of you are therapy shoppers? If you feel too, if you feel too self-conscious about this, it's not necessary to, to point it out. But if you see it in the lighter side of this webinar, just say, yes, I am a therapy shopper. Then we can all have a good chuckle. Right. So there's a real concept when it comes to an emotional buying process. People buy emotionally. People buy emotionally. So you got to attach something emotional to your product or your service that people will actually buy into. Right. So Alison says she dislikes shopping. So um, that's good. So you'll never fall in the trap of therapy shopping. Fabulous. Ansari says she is unfortunately a therapy shopper. That's very funny. Right. Very funny. Cool. Okay, now we already discussed two aspects that can differentiate you from the market. The first one is to build business on your strength. And the second one is attaching an emotional concept to your product or your service offering. Right. And my suggestion is that you even just find your strengths by using that model. You already have a unique advantage. Attaching an emotional concept will make your advantage stronger, unique. And then lastly, Steve Jobs said, never try to be better than the competition. Try to be different. All right. Never try to be better than the competition. Try to be different. So what makes your business different? What makes you as an entrepreneur different? Got to ask yourself, what makes me different than the other people? If you can pinpoint that thing that makes you different, I suggest you start bringing it into your marketing campaigns, into your branding, into your advertising, into your sales pitches. You want to tell people why you are different. Right. And don't fake it. Don't try to be fake when it comes to being different. You got to be genuine. You got to be real. Like people are not stupid. They see right through you. And uh, uh, another thing, the founder of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, said uh, mass advertising can help build brands. In his words, he said, but it is authenticity that makes them last. Right. Mass advertising can help build brands, but it's authenticity that makes them last. So don't try to be fake. Just try to be different, real, legitimately different. Cool. Hope you guys are with me. So there you go. Three methods to get a unique advantage in the market. And once you can pinpoint these three methods, 
I suggest you start pushing it through your marketing and your sales. All right, push it through your marketing and your sales, very important. Then we're going to go over to a few thoughts that I have on people buy, uh, on, on, on why people buy emotionally. So thoughts that is pertaining to your business. So you got to think and ask yourself when you look at your business, how are you faring with this emotional concept that you are selling? And thought number one would be, are you building business on your strengths that automatically give you a unique advantage? Yes or no? Right, so you guys can, can just in the comment section put in the caption hashtag one and that means that's the answer to thought number one. And again, I'm going to repeat, are you building business on your strengths that automatically give you a unique advantage? Yes or no? You can just say hashtag one, yes or hashtag one, no. I'm going to wait for some answers to come through here. Right, I've got, Lawrence, I've got a question here from you. Just note, at the end of this webinar, I will uh, definitely make 10 to 15 minutes available for questions and answers, so you guys can keep your questions and answers for, for then. Right, so I get a lot of yeses here. That's very good news. That's very, very good news. Uh, and I think you guys should continue to push that wheel, right, that flywheel, all Great concepts from that book. Um, good to great. You gotta, if you know you're building on your strength, you gotta push that wheel over and over and over and over, and eventually it will pick up momentum and and you will be off and running. Okay, thought number two. A lot of yeses. That's good. I like it. Thought number two. What is the emotional concept people feel when they're buying from you? Now this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Hashtag two. And you can just, in one or two words, summarize what you think it is that people are buying from you emotionally. Okay, hashtag two, one or two words, what are people buying from you emotionally? Let's see some more answers come through. Hashtag two, what is the two words that would summarize your emotional offering to your market or your service? It's a tricky question. Tricky question. Okay, warm and fuzzy, feel good. All right, interesting, Alison. That is a good advantage, I would say. People want to feel good. Right, any other, any other answers on this one? Honesty and trustworthiness, I like that subtle. Business is personal. So the more credible you are, the more honest you are, and the more people trust you, the more loyal the clients become over time. And that's very important. Katlejo, I'm invested in their success. Excellent, excellent. So you're almost taking the concept of, as I'm a partner. I'm a partner with your financial success or your business success. Right, Caroline, excitement. Good, I like that. I like that. I think that's something that you can now start to push in this, this epidemic as people need some good news. Corlia, same with you. People need some good news. How can you make people happy? Sanitation with the work. Right. Interesting. Interesting, Quibus. You can maybe just elaborate on that. I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying over there. Okay. No, Buchle, honestly, honesty and good. That's good. Okay, non-judgmental, Gonse, good stuff, Lerato, innovation through play and education. Excellent, I like that, I like that. The new luxury and uniqueness, cool, good. Right, so thought number three, what makes your product or service offering different? Another tricky question, this, and I don't want to see a better service and a better price. I don't want to see that, we're going to get to that shortly. I want to know what makes your product or service different different than the competition? What makes it different than the competition? Hashtag three, what's the difference? Hashtag three, short and sweet, what is the difference between your product offering 
and other people. Corlea, that's a very good answer. I love that. I love that. Excellent. Excellent. You are the competitive advantage. Very good. Very, very good. You guys can uh, stick around afterwards when you get to the questions and answers. And I'll tell you why number three, Corlea, that just said she's a competitive advantage, why that is so true. Uh, you can just ask me that if you're really interested in that in the questions and answers section. Right, Alison says the team, I like that. Passionate, energetic team that really buys into the concept. There's no replacement for that. I agree. Right, guys, get your answers in. It's a tricky question, this. Tricky, tricky. Impact, Gonse, that's good. Clientele, no Buchle, you can just maybe explain a bit there. Why uh, the clientele? How does that make your service or product offering different? Right, now I'm going to go over to thought number four. The emotional concept or message can be communicated through your brand name and tagline. That's something that I've been hammering on over and over. If you really get to this uniqueness of your business, you've got to start pushing that thoughts and that perspective through your marketing and through your branding as a message. Remember, guys, marketing is about perception. Marketing is about perception. And if you can start pushing the right perception in your marketing, you'll buy the right space in people's minds to your business and service offering. Very important. Very important. Great. Okay, I've just seen some other three answers coming through here. Practical solutions for Katlejo. That's good. That's simplistic. Quibus, quality of work done. Definitely, I think the more quality your work is, the better the word of mouth is outside. And that obviously relates in very good viral marketing and empathy for Nobuchle. Understand. All right, understand. That's good. Standing in your client's shoes. That's very good. Right. So I just want to quickly finish off this with saying, guys, again, identify your strengths. Try to create a word that really explains your, your, uh, your strengths. Try to get to that word and start pushing that through your marketing and your advertising. Also, I want to say, try to attach an emotional concept to your service offering that also gets communicated through marketing and advertising, and lastly, be different. And don't be afraid to communicate your difference. Don't be afraid to communicate your difference. People want difference, right? People want to be, people want somebody that offers them something different than the normal corporates in South Africa. Cool. I'm going to go through a few examples now of unique brands. And in the in the comment section, I want you guys to, to answer what is the emotional concept these brands are selling. And you can use one or two words. Keep it really simplistic. Quick answers. What is the emotional concept that these brands are selling? This is going to be fun. Right. What's the emotional concept this brand is selling? What do you feel if you wear this? What do you see when you look at this? What's the emotional concept this brand is selling? Let's see who's going to answer first. Let's see who's going to answer first. Interesting. Right, anybody, anybody. I can do it. I like it. It's like their slogan, just do it. Having fun, happy, yes. Yes, freedom. That's a good one, Sardal. That's a good one. Energy, Caroline, I like that. Energy, agility, right? Um, I like it. These good answers coming through. Cool. Now, the second brand, the answer might be in this picture. The answer might be in this picture. What's the emotional concept this brand is selling? What's the emotional concept this brand specifically is selling? It should be an easy one. You guys shouldn't be challenged by this. 
Right, let's see who comes first with an answer. Refreshment, yes, 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 indeed. 100% correct. Refreshment. And they've done a very good job. They've done a really good job in, in the advertising. And I want to also reiterate the fact that in their advertising, you can see the emotional concept that they are communicating through to the market refreshment or refresh yourself uh, this is that's the emotional concept they communicating through their marketing and people get it people understand it it's very simplistic it's very clear right and then my favorite brand of them all who was created by my favorite entrepreneur of all time steve jobs right what are these guys selling what are these guys selling let's see who answers first What's the emotional concept when you look at this? There's actually a few answers. There's not just one answer that's correct. Beautiful things. I agree. I agree. Uh, I hope, uh, Rachel, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Connectivity. Yes. Connectivity. I want to add, Alison, to that connectivity. I want to add making technology easy. So now I don't just have a laptop, but my laptop is connecting with my smartphone. So whatever I do on my laptop, I can do access on my smartphone, vice versa. Right, fun, refreshing, or a fun, uh, refreshing simplicity. Yes, Gonse, that's correct. That's why I said there's more than one correct answer. There's simplicity, there's connectivity, there's technology made easy, technological advantage. Yes, 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 yes. Guys, so there's no really right or wrong answer with what you've given me with these three brands. But as you look at them, the brand speaks a message. Now, you got to look at your business. you got to look at your brand and you got to ask yourself, what is the message my brand is getting out there about what makes me different in the market? Okay, this is massive on marketing. Huge, huge. Right. So let's go on to the second section of creating a competitive advantage. Now that you are setting yourself apart as a unique business you got to be competitive as well it's not just about emotion it's about logical business also right so competitiveness and as i said in the beginning people buy emotionally now i want to go over and say they justify the purchase logically right so people buy emotionally and they justify the purchase logically. And there's five logical things that needs to make sense for me to buy something, spend my money and buy and pay for it. Right, five logical things. Logic number one, are you, you got to sell a need to have. You got to sell something that's needed, a necessity, right? That's number one. Logic number two, it's got to be an affordable price. You don't want to smoke your clients right that's not a good idea logic number three time and duration logic number four what's the requirements for your client or your customer to continue with the process and logic number five what is the process involved for us to continue and i'm pointing this out in five steps because it's, it's something that you got to build into your sales pitch. It's something that you got to communicate clearly for people to understand. And I'm going to use the concept to, let's say, for instance, let's use, okay, so at Entrepreneurship School, we've got a business program that, that uh, is one of our services. And it's something that's unique. So there's nothing else like that in the market. But that's obviously going to prompt the clients and the customers to ask some questions about this business program. So, for instance, they will ask, okay, um, how much does it cost? People always want to know what is the price of your product or your service. That's logic number two. The second question people will ask is, how long will it take to do this business program? People want to know what's the time implications involved in your business. That's logic number three. Logic number four requirements, after they're happy with the price and they, they have seen that the time is applicable, 
they will then say, okay, well, what do you need from me to continue? What's the requirements? And then logic number five is the process involved. So after they happy with, okay, you don't really need anything, you can just come and we can start with the business. That's for the best program. Logic number five will be, all right, cool. So how do we continue now? Right, so I'm going to lay out the, the plan of action for you, step one, two, three, four, five, uh, for you to continue then with the service. If I can communicate this clearly in my sales pitch, I will give the consumer or the client or the customer, I will give an opportunity to actually justify logically whether he wants to buy or not. Right. So emotion is a big aspect to why people buy. But if they can't justify logically, you might lose the sale. You don't want to lose the sale. You've got to make it easy for them to understand. And I want to reiterate the fact that it's got to be a need. Right. So the main question when it comes to logic number one, which is sell a need to have, the main question there is, are you selling a nice to have or are you selling a need to have? I'm going to ask that again. Are you selling a nice to have or are you selling a need to have? You've got to think about it this way. If, if I'm, okay, let's say it's a recession. Everybody's budgets are tight. Money is not free and flowing. Uh, that really means that you're going to take a look at your budget because we're in a recession in South Africa. You're going to take a look at your budget and you're going to ask yourself, what, what do I need to spend my money on now? It's not about nice things, glamour, feeling good. It's about survival. So you cut off anything that's unnecessary and your money goes into necessities like groceries. You need food every day. You need water to drink. You need clothes to wear. You need a roof over your head. You need transport to get to where you need to be. Those are the necessities. So my question to you now is, if you look at your product or your service offering and it's only a nice to have, it means when it comes to the logical part of logically I need to make sense of this before I buy, you might be losing sales. So how do you change the product or service that's a nice to have into something that's actually needed in the industry or the market? Okay, you got to ask yourself, how do I change my product or service, which is a nice to have into a need to have so that when I explain it logically to my client, they can make sense of my product or my service and I don't lose the sale. Right, am I speaking to anybody here? Are you guys learning something? Just hit me up with a yes. All right, I want to know that you guys are actually learning something here. That would mean a lot to me. Cool. Logically, you're making sense of your product or your service offering. Emotionally, people can attach a unique advantage to your product or your service, then the sales pitch becomes easier, right? So now it's not a telecommunication sales pitch. Now it's something that you can actually explain clearly, right? And sales is nothing other than an excellent product or service that people need, right? There's that word people need. Are you selling a nice to have or a need to have? Okay. At a good price, don't rip off your clients, communicate it clearly, and deliver it with excellent service. I'm going to repeat that. Sales is nothing other than an excellent product or service that people need at a good price, communicate it clearly, and deliver it with excellent service. That is sales in a nutshell. And once you have that unique advantage, confidently and boldly, Communicate that through your sales pitch. Once you have logically made sense of your package that you're offering to your client or your customer, communicate that clearly, right? And then you got to back it up with excellent service. This, in a nutshell, is sales. It's not Matthew McConaughey with his slick voice on Hollywood making sales left, right, and center. That doesn't exist. Sales is something that's a system that you need to figure out and 
obviously once you figure out the system you get the best best person for the job and you should increase that sales through that system right we're going to finish off this webinar with service accessibility service accessibility very very important this is something that can really put you apart from the competition so just by show of hands that's just a form of speaking but how many of you are struggling to read this uh, this comment on this slide how many of you are struggling to read this right i did this on purpose but i first want to know do you guys struggle to read this yes or no right let's use first Corlea, i'm not sure what that means just an exclamation mark difficult to see clearly that's the answer i'm looking for yes allison difficult to see right and I want, I did this on purpose because I want you guys to understand that you've got to make it easy for people, right? You've got to make it easy for people. Don't make it difficult. I almost want to say, I almost want to say you, you need to explain it to people as if they were five years old. And the reason I'm saying that is you sitting every day in your business you know exactly what you're doing your staff knows what you are doing it's like because it's your business you do this every single day then a customer comes in he wants advice you explain it you give him a watered down explanation because for you it's logical everybody should understand what you do the reality of the fact is that guy doesn't understand these the first day he's ever met you he doesn't know what's going on in your business and if you don't explain it to me as if you were five years old, it might be too difficult to understand. So remove the red tape. Don't make things difficult. And you can also see it's difficult to read my logo here as well. I've did this on purpose. Make things easy. Make things easy. The easier you make it, the better. And I'm going to back up this concept with the incredible entrepreneur. Steve Jobs. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. See, Sardel is actually in front of me when it comes to the slides, right? So you talk about simplify always, and I'm now on the slide. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So if you look at Steve Jobs, this guy was freaking incredible. And in, in my research, I'm not saying opinion, I'm saying research. I've done a lot of research on this. In my research, Steve Jobs is the best entrepreneur of all time until somebody can prove me wrong, which I doubt. Simplicity, the ultimate sophistication. When Steve Jobs launched iTunes, right? His own employees came to him and said, people will never buy for music online. You've got to understand why. At that stage, music was pirated left, right, and center. People downloaded music uh, illegally, and it was a real problem for the music industry. And Steve Jobs came in, he created this incredible simplistic platform where people can just click, they download a song, and boom, there they go. And his employees came to him and said, it will never work. People won't pay because they can illegally download it for free. Steve Jobs said, no, people will pay if you make it easy. Now, that should give you guys a hint. The easier you make your product or your service, the quicker people pay, period. The easier you make the product or the service, the quicker people pay. And I've got three thoughts on this that I want to challenge you guys on. And the first thought is, how accessible is your product or your service offering? Is it really easy for me to make use of your service? Or do I have to fill in a bunch of freaking admin and documents and eventually I'm like, I'm finished with this. This is way too complicated right firstly that's your first thought ask yourself look at your business how simplistic is my product or my service offering thought number two what is the main reason the prospects are not paying all right ask that question if it's anything other than money it's something that you could possibly fix to speed up payments what is the main reason prospects are not paying that's your second thought. And your third thought, how can you target these issues directly 
remove the red type and speed up your payments. Remove the red type, speed up payments. I'm going to give you guys a practical example. Last year, in, in, in the Business Plan Pro team, I had a meeting with the Nakani who wrote the business plans and my salesman at that time, Tandu, and I asked them, what is the reason people aren't paying for the business plan? And without flinching, both of them said the questionnaire. Okay, just to give you guys some perspective, I've got a questionnaire that goes out to my clients. They complete the questionnaire, they send it back, and we can write the business plan. But the people really struggled with the questionnaire. And then I got it. And I realized I need to simplify this question. Otherwise, I'm going to lose business. We simplified the process. We streamlined it. And sure, after that, payments start to increase. I've, I'm, I've, uh, I've experienced this firsthand. That's why I'm teaching on this. You've got to make it really easy. Right. So in my opinion, I've already taken you guys over to what Steve Jobs said, don't try to be better than the competitors, try to be different. So I want to add to that statement, I've got my own quote here, I want to add to that statement on creating a competitive advantage, try to be different. So I agree with Steve Jobs, I want to add to that and say try to be better, more competitive, and try to be more simplistic than the competition. If you can focus on these three areas, being different, being better, being simplistic, I guarantee you guys, the business will pick up payments, will pick up momentum, and you will start to move in a more clear direction. This is what entrepreneurship is all about, innovating and creating this competitive advantage to be more streamlined. And this is where you need to be a bit creative and innovative when it comes to your own business. Right, are you guys still with me? Are you guys still with me? Give me a yes in capital letters. Tell me that you're still with. Right, so guys, that is basically the end of my webinar when it comes to the competitive advantage. I just want to quickly reiterate that we are CETA accredited. Uh, so keep that in mind. And I've got a special offer for you guys. Okay, so I've got a special offer for you guys to... If you can, if, uh, if you're interested in the online business course, which is a really simplistic process, it takes about two weeks to complete, you basically pay and you start the course, you've got over 50 educational videos, there's a study guide and a Word document you get with this course to create a very practical business plan. So if you're interested in this offer, it's 50% discount for the next 24 hours only. 490 rand. I've got the offer here on your right hand side. You're welcome to click the learn more button. Don't worry, it's not going to trick you into buying anything. So you can literally just click there to check out the course. I'm not trying to trick you guys. And I just want to run through the prospectus. So we've got five different models, right? We've got five different models. Model number one is the reality of entrepreneurship. We focus on uh, myths and realities when it comes to entrepreneurship. I'm doing a case study on Steve Jobs. We've got uh, the model number two, which is the right business idea. How do I get to my sweet spot? How do I get to the right idea? And how do I build a healthy business culture? We've got model number three, which is building a viable business model. How do I build a viable business model? Very, very important. Uh, practical research creating a competitive advantage, a unique advantage, what we've just spoken about, pinpointing what you are selling. We've got a, a fourth module, which is your vision. How do I actually create a practical vision for my business that I can pursue and achieve? Uh, and also important to note that a vision always consists of a purpose, a strategy, and a tactical approach. And without vision, it's impossible to build anything in life. It's impossible. And then model number five is your building blocks where we help you to map out your selling process in detail, um, applying marketing and sales strategies, uh, also assisting you with certain templates to really build the vision that you've now created 
for your business. And I also want to just touch on the special offer number two, which is the personal business program. That one is where we individually sit one-to-one -one and we do the personal coaching over a period of 12 weeks. It's 3,900 Rand per month for three months. And it includes access to the online business course. It includes access to the uh, a Word document, which is the blueprint that will become your business plan. It also includes, as I mentioned, one-to-one -one personal coaching where I'm taking you through the five modules uh, that I've just mentioned to help you uh, fix the foundation of your business or create a foundation for your business and then help you to launch in the direction of your dreams. Right, so that one is not on special. It's just the online business course at 50% discount for 24 hours. You guys can check out the, the offer, as I mentioned. And we will now go over to questions and answers. If there's any questions that you guys have, I'll be happy to remain online for another 15 minutes to answer some questions. Other than that, thank you very much for joining. I'm going to leave my contact details up here so you guys can pop me an email at brand at entrepreneurshipschool.co.za. You can also give us a call at 066-186-1354. And if there's any questions, you guys can hit me with the questions. Otherwise, you can just greet me and maybe in a nutshell say what you learned from this webinar. That would really be encouraging for me and helping me with setting up future webinars. Yes, Alison, you will get a recording of this webinar in about at about four o'clock. There will be an automatic email going out with a replay link from from webinar jam. So just check that out. And yeah, you can you can definitely uh, listen to the recording. And I also want to mention uh, I will be doing webinars for the foreseeable future every second week on Thursday from two o'clock to three o'clock. So you guys can save that date and time and always check out our Facebook page because I'll always post the link to register for the webinars on our Facebook. Right, so any questions coming through? You guys can, uh, you guys can ask me some questions now. Great stuff. Thanks, Alison, for the comment. Uh, simplicity is very important. Make it easy. People don't want difficult. And I also want to add to that, and I want to say that um, one my salesman one day told me that he got one client that was shopping around online, and that person told him that they're going to use us because our process is so easy. And then he said, with the other people, uh, it's very, it, it's a lot of documents that they need to complete to uh, in order to actually use the service, and that's why they're using us. So simplicity is huge. The new yes, the recording will go out and you can just watch the replay link. Great stuff. Thanks, Otto, for the feedback. I really appreciate it. No buchle. Thank you for the comment. I like it. I'm happy that you learned a lot. That's good. Very good. Great stuff, Lerato. I'm happy that you got a bit of perspective and insight. I want to encourage you and say, use this now. Identify your strength. Identify your competitiveness and, and go from there. Make it simplistic. Right. Great stuff. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, it looks like the webinar was so straight to the point. There's no questions. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, I've got a question here from Rachel. Cool, I'm just going to read it. Right, I, uh, yeah, uh, Rachel, I'm hope, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. So one thing that I just want to add to your, your comment of being a professional. Lawrence, I'll get your question now. Uh, one thing that I just want to add to being a professional, I'm going to use the example of a plumber. Okay. A plumber 
let's say this plumber looks at his boss one day and he's like, you know what? If it wasn't for this boss, I would, uh, or, or, or rather if it wasn't for me, this guy wouldn't have a business. So that plumber then, they call it the entrepreneurial seizure. You can read the book, The E-Myth Revisited, about that brilliant book. Uh, they get an entrepreneurial seizure and they like, okay, I'm now an entrepreneur, but he's making a vital mistake. So he's starting a business based on his expertise as a plumber and not as an entrepreneur. He only had an entrepreneurial seizure. Now, being a good plumber and being an entrepreneur is two very different things. So this guy's making a fatal assumption that because I'm a professional or I'm technically good at what I do, that means I will start a great business in that industry. And that's very, very, uh, that couldn't be further apart from each other. So the best advice that I can give you is, even though you're professionally good at what you do, you can't, that, that doesn't guarantee you're going to start a successful business being a uh, good professional at what you do. You've got to understand that business is one thing and professionally technical on a service is another thing. Uh, business consists of I need to generate leads, I need to convert the leads into a sale, I need to fulfill the client's needs. And the reality is if you can't generate a lead and if you can't convert that lead into a sale, which is 80% of the success of your business, aka marketing and sales, if you can't do that, you will have no technical work to do. So no matter how professional you are, no matter how technically good you are at what you do, if you can't generate a lead and you can't convert it into a sale, that means you don't make money. So you can't do technical work. So rather than focusing on professionally you're good at what you do, rather focus on, okay, I've got to be, uh, or rather I, I've got to understand marketing and I've got to understand sales. And there's five key hats every entrepreneur should wear. I suggest that you read up and that you educate yourself on these hats. Hat number one, marketing. You've got to be not the best, but you've got to understand marketing because you've got to create a brand. Secondly, you've got to understand sales. Thirdly, uh, the third hat is operations. You've got to understand the concept of creating a system-dependent business, not a people-dependent business. Hat number four, financially compliance-wise, you need to be in order. And number five is the management. Once those four departments that I've just mentioned, which is marketing, sales, operations, management is in place, you need to put on your management hat, get systems in place, employ people in each department and manage them. That in a nutshell is how you build a business. Uh, so I would suggest, Rachel, we can do a free consultation session. If you contact me on this email address, I'm happy to spend an hour one-to-one -one with you and do a free consultation that we can see how we can get you going with your new venture that, we, that you want to go into. Right. So pop me an email, Rachel, and let's set up a date for that free consultation. Okay, Lawrence, you are saying, how can starting entrepreneurs adapt the HR concept? Yes, I saw that question earlier. Very good. First of all, that's a brilliant book. That book from, um, so it's a brilliant book from Jim Collins, From Good to Great. Okay, political economic climate. Okay, so interesting question now. Okay, so Lawrence, I would suggest uh, business is still business, regardless of the economic, political climate. Let me break down business quickly in my perspective. It's, it's a product or service that you need so badly you're willing to pay me for it. In a nutshell, that's business, right? I'm offering you something that you need so badly you're willing to pay me for it. In a nutshell. Now, when it comes to the political and economical climate, I try not to think about that. I try to look at the market and I ask myself, how can I add value to these people based on my strength or my talent, based on my passion, based on uh, economical engine that makes sense? How can I add value to people's life, the consumer, to make sure that politically, economically, I'm not really affected by those climates? And here's the reality. 
if I can learn how to sell my product and my service to the consumer, I've got my future in my own hands. If I'm doing business, applying for tenders, if I'm doing business, applying for contracts and always banking on other people to give me business, I never have my future in my own hands. I only have my future in my own hands if I can learn how to sell to the consumer. And if uh, and selling to the consumer is, is difficult, I'll give you that. Because you're touching their livelihood, you're touching their money. If you come and sell to me personally, I have to personally take money out of my pocket and pay you for your service or your product. That's why it's got to be a need for me and not a nice for me. It's got to be a need. All right. I hope I'm making sense, Lawrence. I'm just giving you the way that I see things. Um, I try not to focus politically, economically. I just try to give value. This webinar over here, it's got nothing to do with politics or the economy. I'm just giving you guys value for free. That's my passion. That's my passion. It's also my skill because I've skilled myself in this area. And to adapt that hedgehog concept, I would say go back to the drawing board, ask yourself, what is my talent? What is my skill? What can I do better, better than other people, regardless of the economy or the politic or, 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 or the politics? Secondly, what am I truly passionate about? And you gotta draw a line between a hobby that you're passionate about and a business industry that you're passionate about. Okay, go find a business industry at least. Try to focus on an industry that you're really passionate about. Because if, if you can target an industry with your talent or your skill, that makes you different. Then you gotta figure out how can I make money in this industry? Then you're off and running. I hope that makes sense. Lawrence, you can just pop me a message and say that makes sense or not. Then I'll be happy with that. Ah, look at Gonse. Gonse, you can ask the university to pay you the money back and then you give me half the profits. <laughs> Great stuff. I'm very happy to, to see that you're learning so much. Uh, and it's great feedback. So thank you for sharing, Gonza. I really appreciate that. Right. Rachel, I will be looking forward to your email. Cool. Katlejo, politics and, politics and the economy are business risk. That's true. The key is to create and add value to a client. Yes, I agree. Learn how to sell to the consumer directly. Learn how to sell to the consumer directly. That would be my biggest set of advice uh, for you, Lawrence. And I agree with Katlejo. Thank you, Katlejo. Lawrence, you can just indicate that, that you're happy with that answer or not. Then we can go through it again. Right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining. I'll be seeing you guys in two weeks again, where I'm probably going to look at branding. Right, so we're going to do a webinar on branding in the next two weeks. I'll also look to get some specialists on board uh, to share their expertise when it comes to branding and creating a solid brand. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. And thanks so much for joining. Pop me up with an email if you guys want to add anything or just give me a message or give me more inf information about your business. Send me an email and uh, I'll see you guys again. Thanks so much. Have a great day.